What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about vaqueros in the American West, which you can use to create a historically accurate vaquero character in Red Dead Online. Let's get started. As we've covered the origin of the cattle industry in the New World and the development of cowboy culture in my How to Create a Historically Accurate Cowboy Character video, in this one we'll be focusing on vaqueros themselves. While I've utilized a number of different resources for the creation of this video, for anyone interested in the subject, I highly recommend Arnold R. Rojas' superb book, These Were the Vaqueros. Rojas was the real deal. Born in California in the late 1800s, he was a self-educated bilingual man who not only worked the ranches of the American West, but also traveled to Latin America. America, Spain, Portugal, and Morocco to research the intricacies of vaquero horsemanship at its origins. The end result is a masterpiece of vaquero cultural exploration that I can't recommend enough for anyone interested in the topic. Vaqueros were the original cowboys of the New World, mostly of Spanish, indigenous, or mixed descent, developed traditions of horsemanship, equipment, and language which served as the foundation of the later American cowboy of Texas and the Northern Ranges, and the Buckaroo of California, the Great Basin, Oregon, and beyond. Before evolving into these Americanized forms, a process that began around the mid-1800s, the original vaqueros cultivated a reputation as the most skilled and knowledgeable horsemen of the West. Many young men were drawn to the vaquero life, and it's not hard to see why. Vaqueros lived an adventurous life, exercised mastery in their profession, projected pride through their clothing and ornamentation, and carried themselves with immense confidence. Arnold Rojas writes that, quote, when forced to walk about, the vaquero swaggered a little and with reason, for nowhere in the history of the world has any calling been more glorified, more words written about, or had more imitators than that of this common laborer and herder of cattle. Make no mistake, they did it for the pride, not the pay. For perspective on this, consider that a young between the ages of 12 and 14 who was entering the vaquero ranks was paid just five dollars a month. After a couple years, the salary was raised to $12. After five years of experience, a young vaquero could expect to receive around $25 a month. Even a seasoned veteran vaquero was only paid around $40 a month, about the same as a typical farm laborer at the time. Rojas tells the story of a man who came across a group of vaqueros huddled around a campfire one early wet December morning. The man asked if they were all crazy to be both sleeping and working outside in such conditions. One vaquero replied, quote, We must be. If we weren't, we wouldn't be riding around in the rain for $40 a month. Tales of Vaquero adventures contributed greatly to their folk hero status. In These Were the Vaqueros, Rojas writes that, quote, when the bawling of frightened cattle awakened them, they would know the great Oso Pardo, the grizzly bear, was coming down the cordones, the ridges, driving the cattle in panic before him. Taking their best horses, they rode out and roped the pardo and killed it with their knives. That's pretty badass. In another story, a famous vaquero named La Salda came upon a mountain lion feeding on a calf carcass. Wasting no time, he grabbed his riata, his lariat, whirled it overhead, and tossed it at the cougar, catching him by the neck. He then turned his horse and galloped towards some trees, deftly weaving in and out of them at right angles while the dragged mountain lion pinballed from trunk to trunk and was crushed to death. Just to be clear, that might be the coolest thing I've ever heard. Now that we've talked a bit about who the vaqueros were and what they did, we'll turn our attention to the clothing they wore. On the range, vaqueros wore plain utilitarian shirts, usually white, gray, or black, with the collar fully buttoned and the sleeves down. Bright colored shirts were much more common amongst later buckaroos than the original vaqueros. Still, some vaqueros were known to add some flash to their attire, so it's not ahistorical to dabble a little. In Red Dead Online, the most historically accurate choices are the simple collar overshirt and the everyday shirt in white, gray, or black. If you're going for a more California buckaroo, choose one with louder colors and patterns like the red or blue frumpy shirt, red collar overshirt, or some other striped or checkered pattern. And if you're going for an American cowboy, you're, well, watch the wrong video. According to Jeremy Agnew's book, Spanish Influence on the Old Southwest, early vaqueros wore short breeches called calzones, or full-length pantaloons called calzoneras. These pants were slid up the outer length and closed with buttons except for the bottom outer part, which remained open. Many of these pants were embellished along their length with embroidery or metal accents. In Red Dead Online, the closest option to this is the brown or gray Cabrera pants, which have similar silver ornamentation along the outer seams. Other options I'd recommend would be the leather pants, padded saddle work pants, and studded pants. Author Arnold R. Rojas writes in These Were the Vaqueros that, quote, a vest was standard equipment. In looking at photos of the period, these appear to be tan, gray, brown, or black, and made of wool. In Red Dead Online, I recommend the ubiquitous traditional vest in black or tan. 
Indie Vaqueros, especially in cooler weather, donned a cloth or leather jacket called a chaqueta. Most were short, extending to the belt line, while others, particularly in cold weather, draped to the thigh. And read that online, the closest short option is the military jacket. This should be your go-to Vaquero jacket. The Sandoval jacket makes a good effort, but it's a bit short, a tad too elaborate, and most importantly, cost a whopping 10 gold. For the longer jacket, try the Tanner Brown Everyman jacket, or the Tanner Brown leather jacket, or the black Farling jacket. Vaquero jackets can also be completed with a poncho, a rectangular cloth that drapes over the shoulders, chest, and back, with a slit in the middle for the head to be placed through. I recommend the Toros or Chuparosa ponchos. For colors, red was popular, but others chose a more subdued look. You can't go too wrong here, so have fun. Early vaqueros draped a loose piece of leather called an arma across the saddle horn and over the legs to protect themselves from thorns and cacti when riding. The name is believed to have derived from the shortened Spanish armadura, meaning armor. In time, these developed into a smaller, lighter version called armitas, that is, small armor, which were secured directly to each leg, covering the rider from thigh to upper shin. These were also popularly called half shafts and chinks, an abbreviated form of chincaderos. A farther evolution of these leather leg protectors came in the form of chaparreras, shortened shafts, which were full-length leather leggings stretching from waist to ankle. Author Arnold Rojas calls these shotgun shafts, which we covered in depth in my How to Create Historically Accurate Cowboy video. These provided maximum protection from cacti, thorn bushes, or other abrasive brush, among the latter, chaparral bushes, from which shafts get their name. Most shafts were made of cowhide, but some around the Sierra Nevada mountains of California were made from bear skin, with the fur left on. And just as a completely random side note, it was said that when these things became wet, they were the stinkiest things you've ever smelled in all your living life. Now I just want to note that it's really difficult to pronounce this word, shaps, when for 40 years I've been calling it chaps. But I've had a couple viewers who are in this industry who know this stuff well, and they pronounce it shaps. So I looked into it myself and it appears that it's probably actually pronounced shaps, which is still very difficult for me to say. In Red Dead Online, I recommend the Alvarado shaps as your go-to Vaquero shaps. If you want the stinky bear shaps, use the brown Heathland shaps. Atop their heads, Vaqueros wore a sombrero. The name originates from the word sombra, meaning shade in Spanish, fitting name for a hat with an extremely wide brim. This brim protected the wearer from the scorching southern sun and also channeled rain away from the body. As for materials, sombreros were usually made of leather or felt, though some were made of woven straw as well. In regards to color, most leather and felt sombreros were tan or light gray. In Red Dead Online, the bolero hat, while not perfect, is your best option. Unfortunately, however, it costs a gold which is pretty steep. That said, it's a damn fine hat, and I can't recommend it enough. As for non-gold options, I recommend the Strung Sombrero, and for a down-on-his-luck vaquero, the Tobacco Hat. For vaqueros, spurs were utilitarian, but also symbols of status and pride. According to Spanish influence in the Old Southwest, quote, even vaqueros who did not wear boots usually wore spurs, even strapping them to their bare feet if they had no boots. Vaquero spurs were known for their exceptionally large rowels, that is, the circular spiked disc off the back of the spur. For them, the bigger the better. Some were so large that the wearer had to remove them before dismounting, as they couldn't even walk in them. Most vaquero spurs were made of iron, but many vaqueros opted to upgrade them as status symbols, spending their hard-earned wages on silver spurs, or at least iron spurs with inlaid silver. Arnold R. Rojas writes in these were the vaqueros that they put, quote, as much silver mounting on bits and spurs as they could afford. It was a poor vaquero indeed, and one entirely without pride, who did not have some things made of silver about him or his horse. Later in the book, the author relates a story of a man riding alongside an old vaquero. The man asked the vaquero, quote, why do all the vaqueros use silver mounted bits and spurs? The vaquero answered, quote, because they have pride. Have you ever seen a rider who didn't use silver mounted bits and spurs that was even worth a damn? The vaquero continued saying, quote, A man transmits his state of mind to his horse. A rider who doesn't have enough pride in his trade to decorate his outfit with a little silver never rides a good horse because he has no pride to transmit to the horse. And a horse that has no pride is never any good. There you have it. Following these historical vaquero preferences, in Red Dead Online I recommend spurs with silver ornamentation. My personal favorites are the black Gurdon Deluxe Spurs, the brown or black Stanger Spurs, original or deluxe, and of course the aptly named Vaquero Spurs. The rowels on the Vaquero Spurs are the largest, which is historically correct, but the design of the rowels on the Stanger, original and deluxe, are more historically accurate. 
In these for the Vaqueros, author Arnold Rojas writes that, quote, most of the cowmen affected silk handkerchiefs worn around the neck and that they preferred bright colors. Therefore, in Red Dead Online, I recommend red or yellow neckerchiefs, the bright blue frontiersman neckerchief, if you were lucky enough to grab it from an earlier pass, or any brightly colored bandana. Rojas writes that fringe buckskin gloves were standard equipment. Unfortunately, Red Dead Online has no fringe gloves available in the catalog. As such, you're pretty free here to choose whatever leather gloves you'd like. But for historical sake, try and choose a natural tan or yellow color. If you were lucky enough to snag the Frontiersman glove from an earlier outlaw pass, they're your best option. The first horses brought to the New World by the Spanish conquistadors were a blend of Andalusian and Arab or North African barb stock. Over the following centuries, other breeds were intermixed with this Spanish strain, muddying the genetic waters. As such, choosing a historically accurate late 1800s Vaquero horse in Red Dead Online can be a bit complicated. To keep things simple and work within the options available within the game, the Andalusian, in all coat colors, is a solid choice. Another option is the Buckskin Mustang, which closely resembles the modern Kiger Mustang, which has been shown to descend largely from Spanish colonial horses. That is, the original Spanish horses brought directly from Spain. Just be sure to switch the main to long. When selecting your horse, it should also be noted the Vaqueros only rode stallions, as they were deemed more powerful than mares. And in case you're curious, for the Vaqueros, the best measure of a horse's power was the size of its testicles. Before you buy, get on down there and take a good look. You know, for historical purposes. <laughs> As for saddles, most vaqueros use full stamp brown or tan high fork and cannel single cinch saddles. If you don't have any idea what the hell all that means, just choose one of the following saddles in any shade of brown or tan. The improved Neller Dakota saddle, the improved Stanger roping saddle, the improved Gurdon trail saddle, or the improved Gurdon vaquero saddle. While all these saddles are double cinched, whereas historically they were single, they are still correct in most other ways. The only other specific modification is that for stirrups, you'll want the top of Theros or the hooded stirrups. Alright, so now we're going to put together some outfits using the information we have. Outfit number one is your standard all-round vaquero. Moving from the ground up, I'm wearing the brown ropers boots with the brown Gurdon Deluxe spurs. For pants, I chose the brown Cabrera pants, and over those, I'm wearing the Alvarado shafts. Up top, I'm wearing the white everyday shirt, tan traditional vest, tan military jacket, the red neckerchief, and the frontiersman gloves. My sombrero is a tan bolero hat. Outfit number two is a good example of how you can slightly modify the templates I provide to create some simple, yet historically accurate alternatives. For this one, everything stays the same as outfit number one, but we remove the military jacket and replace it with a Taurus poncho, and that's it. Funny how changing one item can alter the outfit so much. Outfit number three is another slight modification of outfit number one, and more of a hot weather vaquero. For this, I kept the boots, spurs, and pants the same, but simply removed the chaps, which were often worn, but not always. Up top, I switched to the gray colored overshirt, kept the tan traditional vest, but removed the military jacket. Also switched to the brown strunk sombrero. For outfit number four, I simply created a darker colored version of outfit number one. For this, I chose the black nose Alita boots and black Gurdon Deluxe spurs. For pants, I went with the padded saddle work pants and the dark brown alpha auto shafts. Up top, I chose the collared overshirt, black traditional vest, black military jacket, and yellow neckerchief. The hat is the dark bolero hat. Feel free to mix and match these light and dark components too, to create some good looking but still historically accurate combinations. You really can't go too wrong here. Outfit number five is another jacketless vaquero, but this time done a bit differently. For this, I chose the black nose Alita boots and black Gurdon Deluxe spurs. I went with the Cabrera pants and the dark brown Alvarado shafts. Up top, I went with the gray collared overshirt, black traditional vest, and bright blue frontiersman neckerchief, and switched to the tan workman's glove. For a hat, the gray, brown, or black strung sombreros all look great. If you splurge on the bolero hat, it looks pretty awesome as well. Outfit number six is an homage to the Southern Plains Cowboy I created in one of my earlier videos, but transitioned into a vaquero. For this, I'm wearing the brown ropers boots with the brown Gurdon Deluxe spurs. For pants, I chose the brown Cabrera pants, and over those, I'm wearing the Alvarado shafts. Up top, I'm wearing the blue work shirt, tan traditional vest, and the red neckerchief. My sombrero is the tan bolero hat. My final outfit, number seven, is a cold weather vaquero modeled after California vaqueros and buckaroos that operated in and around the Sierra Nevadas. For this, I chose the black nose Alita boots and black Stanger studded spurs. I went with the studded pants and the brown Heathland chaps. Up top, I've got the white everyday shirt, black traditional vest, and red gathered bandana. I switched to the tan range gloves. For a sombrero, I chose the brown bolero hat. Now you folks have some options, play around with these components to create your own historically accurate vaquero. 
And until next time, I'll see you out on the trail. Thank you folks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, if you want to part support my work, you can do so on Patreon, or you can buy some gear for the Modern Frontier from the Man vs. History Outfit Shop. Thank you folks for watching. You have a wonderful night. We'll see you next time. Before we take off, I just want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. So special thanks to my gold tier patrons, Tyler Bioshock Rodriguez, Ash the Gertson, The Innocents, Hurt and Wade, Man vs. Moose, Bryce B, Cyber, Greg Swag, Jerker Rose, Chasing Victory, Joshua Bale, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Dawson E, Zonk Freezes, Noah Ovens, David Perkins, Saul Goodman, Sneak Ninja, Noah 5943, John Gawley, Jitsai, Your Pal Mitch, Yin Zian, Big Old Bear, Old Hog Nose, and Arthur Hansley. And of course, I have to thank my silver and bronze tier patrons. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. Let's keep growing, let's keep doing what we're doing.